So the short of it is that a geyser of acid exploded into both of my eyes and it messed this one up pretty bad. What's up adventure agents? Agent X here. So I've gotten a lot of comments over the years asking about my eye. Why is it so droopy? Why is it red? What's going on with it? Um, what's wrong with it? And I'm going to tell that story now. What happened to my eye? I'm legally blind in this eye and it happened when I was 11 years old. Um, here's a picture of me when I was a kid before the accident. You can see both eyes look perfectly fine. Here's another picture of me after the accident and you can see that droop going on in my eye right there. So I, when I was 11, I was playing a game with my best friend and we were hiding a shirt in a pool. It was just the two of us. And it was a neighbor's pool that they let us use every once in a while. And um, I didn't know what the skimmer was for, but it hid the, uh, this t-shirt inside of the pool skimmer, which is uh, it's like a vacuum that sucks up stuff, um, like leaves and stuff that float around the skim at the top of the pool. And uh, there's a filter in the skimmer and you can remove that filter to take the stuff out, dump it, put it back in. I didn't know what it was. I took it out, put the shirt down underneath there, stuck it over the top, ha ha, hidden really well. Well, I forgot about it. And because my friend never found it, I win. And anyways, uh, a couple days later, um, uh, I found out that uh, the neighbor's filter was turning green and the filtration wasn't working and they were asking, who did this? Like somebody put something in the skimmer maybe. And I was like, ooh, I did actually. Oops, well, got a lot of trouble there. And I was directed to go and help the crew that was going to uh, remove the shirt. So uh, anyways, I went and helped them. And it was two people, two adults, who were in a leadership position over me. I'm not going to mention their names because, as you'll see in a little bit, it gets pretty embarrassing for them. Um, and so there were two people. Um, one of them was, uh, I don't know, like 20 years old. The other was like, I don't know, 45 at the time or something like that. Or 50 maybe. Anyways, um, they had an idea to get the shirt out. And uh, basically the skimmer, there's a pipe, like a one inch PVC pipe that runs all about 30 feet away to a gigantic pump. And it, it's a big vacuum basically, it circulates water. And their idea was to dump a bunch of muriatic acid into that pipe and then attach a air compressor to the pipe and compress the acid in the pipe and create a ticking time bomb basically and my job was to look down into where the pipe poked out the opening of the pipe where the shirt went down basically the other way and i was to watch for bubbles i was 11 years old did not i was not thinking about what could happen i was to look directly down into the barrel of the gun and wait for it to go off basically and um, anyway, so, uh, I waited for the bubbles, waited, waited for the bubbles. And then kind of without warning, although there may have been a couple bubbles, it exploded. And that will happen when you put 120, uh, pounds per square inch of pressure onto a gigantic pipe bomb full of acid. Uh, it ate the shirt away. It worked. The idea worked. It worked too well. And I was looking down about a foot and a half from this hole and boom, acid just shot up into my face, into my eyes, both eyes, and my mouth and my nose, just uh, up into my sinus cavity, like just acid all over me. And it was painful. It was the most painful thing, as you can probably guess, that has ever happened to me. And I was screaming and running around just like, um, it was horrible. I jumped in the pool. I tried to get the acid out. Uh, uh, a neighbor heard us screaming um, because it wasn't just me looking over the hole. Now this, this is what, you know, <laughs> might help you to feel a little bit more understanding of the people who, uh, oh, there's Agent Rainbow. <laughs> This might help you feel a little bit more understanding of these adults who were in a position of responsibility over me. I'm not gonna mention their names because they, this is just extremely embarrassing that they had an 11 year old do this. 
but they were looking over the hole at the time it exploded too. So it makes me feel a little bit better. Or not, I don't know. Um, but they were standing up above, up here, and they had glasses on. I had no safety glasses on, nothing, just bare eyes. And they got a little bit of acid on them too. And so they were in a little bit of pain, not quite like I was, but um, uh, so they had a hard time helping me out because they were like, ah, like we're all, you know, acid burning our face. And um, so anyways, uh, eventually I got the water hose sprayed up in my eyes, you know, and uh, I didn't know at the time, this is precious time that's going on right now, right? Like this, your eyes are the most sensitive part, one of the most sensitive parts of, of your body on the external. and. When you get something like acid on there or anything, it's like, you know, it's your vision we're talking about. That's like, you, it's like a massive part of how you experience reality for the rest of your life. And if you damage that, ooh. So anyways, um, just, but at the time, I'm just like, I don't know what's going on, it's just pain, you know? So um, what ended up going back to my house and trying to rinse it out in the shower more and, uh, got an appointment with a doctor, a specialist, an eye doctor, emergency, went and rushed over there. And this doctor really made a big, big mistake, as we found out later. So he just looked at it and he's like, oh, you know, it's terrible, but, uh, you know, I think you'll be okay. Just got to wait and heal up, you know. And it was a very difficult day and night for me, um, extreme pain. Um, and the next morning I woke up and couldn't see anything. Um, my eyes have been covered over by a film of scar tissue, or, you know, basically a scab, scabbed over. But you know how scabs, when they're wet, they're like soggy and, you know, so scabbed over and, but it was just this like milky film, basically. Uh, and went back to the eye doctor, he like scraped it off with a Q-tip and he's like, oh, you know, you just gotta keep scraping it off and, you know, cause you don't want it to form over your eye then you'll never be able to see, you know? And uh, so kept doing that um, and didn't work. It kept coming back. Everything was blurry, hazy, couldn't see. It was just, you know how you get out of the pool for too long, you've been opening your eyes when you're a kid and everything's just like, got like, you know, haze everywhere. It's just foggy, basically, and there's like rainbows around everything, kind of like that. Um, so eventually, I went to one of the best eye doctors in the country at the time, a guy named Dr. Kavanaugh in Dallas, Texas, and um, my family took me there. And uh, they, he looked at my eye and ended up needing surgeries. And this eye was getting better and better. And eventually, I have perfect vision in this eye. Now, eventually this eye got better, but this eye was not getting better. This, the film kept coming over, wouldn't stop. And so I started having to go in for surgeries where they put me down and they cut the film off because it was painful now because it came back strong. And they would have to cut it back, like way back into there and kept doing that, kept not working. Couldn't see out of this eye very well, uh, you know, legally blind, uh, very sensitive to light in both eyes. Couldn't, it was just like light, it was like, oh, painful. And I wore a patch on this eye because I just, I couldn't go outside and the lights had to be dimmed inside for me to be able to, anyways, it was, it was a really, really rough part of my life. Um, it basically put the brakes on everything for me. Um, couldn't hang out with friends, couldn't go outside. I couldn't, I couldn't run. I was an adventurous kid. I loved to adventure. I couldn't do anything because it was painful. Like if I do anything, it was oh, really painful. Um, any kind of like getting my blood rate up, my blood pressure up, you know, uh, heart rate up or whatever. Uh, I was a gymnast, as you can see in, in the, one of these photos right here. I tried to go back and be in gymnastics, but it, it, it was difficult. Uh, my friends in gymnastics, they would keep going and I just, I was stuck and uh, couldn't adventure hardly. It, it took a while till I could really start getting back out there and even then it was difficult. So put, a, put, a break, put the brakes on my, adventure, my adventurous life. Ended up having about six surgeries and finally the last surgery I had, they were like, we don't know what to do anymore. We're spending you know, thousands and tens of thousands of dollars to try and fix this problem. And what they ended up doing is they ended up, the, the doctor ended up saying, okay, maybe if we take some skin and graft it on there that it will help stop the, the, 
the scar tissue from growing because what they didn't want is the scar tissue to completely cover my eye permanently. And so they ended up taking skin from my lip here. They cut it off and they grafted it onto my eye right there. You can see that pink fleshy stuff right there. That is skin from my lip. And it kind of worked. Um, I don't know if it was just the scar tissue decided not to come back or, or it was because of that that it didn't come back, but it kind of worked. Honestly, when I was a kid, it was very obvious. I wore a patch or I was very droopy like this, you know, with my eye. It was really red back then, a lot worse. People would ask me all the time, oh, what's wrong with your eye? Oh, what happened to your eye? Oh, is that the accident? What happened? You know, and I would tell the same story. Oh, you know, and I would just have this story that you just pump out, right? And like, and you know, you tell yourself a story over and over again. And like, you just kind of like, it just becomes normal and you don't think about it, you know? And I would say, yeah, I put a shirt in the pool skimmer and then it got caught. So we had to compress acid on it. And then I was looking down for bubbles and it blew up in my face, obviously. Um, it just sounded normal. And I, I, I tell you, it wasn't until I was like 20 years old, and this is gonna sound silly to you guys and dumb, but it wasn't until I was like 20 years old that I was telling that story. And I was like, it was like, whoa, what in the world were those people thinking? It never occurred to me just how absolutely stupid it was, this idea. And you just, you know, you just assume that adults, they know what they're doing. They know, you know, <laughs> oh my gosh. I just, I never thought, it just never hit me. They told an 11 year old kid to look at a ticking, to look down the barrel of a gun while they messed around with trying to figure out how to pull the trigger. Crazy. Bizarre. And I had to forgive them. And um, not exactly easy. Um, I didn't know I had to forgive them until then, later, until I was older. But one thing that helped me forgive them though is another story. A story that I, that will haunt me for good reason. Um, uh, in a good way, hauntings can be a reminder of something and that can be helpful. <laughs> I put my family in danger once. I'm not gonna get into it too much here, um, but uh, Basically, I took us on an adventure that I was not, that I just thought that I was prepared for because I'd done stuff like this all the time, but I'd never done it in the area that I was doing it in. And I just didn't think, hey, maybe there's something different about this area, you know? And there was, and it got to a point where, or there was a point where had just a few uh, things happened, just a few other little things had happened, there was a possibility that some of our kids would have lost their lives. Um, and um, that's life, it happens. Um, but it really told me, gosh, you know, like, it, it, it helped me in understanding a bit about that, right? I'm not saying this situation was exactly like this one. I was sort of being punished for doing something to, you know, it's just, it was crazy to look over that hole, but it gives you a little bit of a perspective. And I definitely forgive those people. Um, if you're watching, you know who you are. I forgive you 100%. Um, so anyways, that's the story. And I'm legally blind in this eye. Uh, 
you know, it's possible someday that I could fix this. Uh, I don't know about the muscles. It'd be very difficult to train these muscles to stay open, you know, because it just, it just naturally droops because it's sensitive to light. It's still sensitive to light. But I, I, I think the technology might exist even now to where I could get a, like a really good cornea transplant and maybe it would fix it. Um, but I tell you what, talk about cup half full, right? I could say, I'm half blind, or I can say, I can see out of one eye. <laughs> I could, it, I mean, it was literally a roll of a dice that I could have lost sight in both eyes. And I didn't. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that I can see my children, that I can see the beautiful colors of nature. I can go on adventures and um, see my beautiful wife. Agent Trinity, I'm so grateful for that. So the cup is half full, I've got this eye. And you know, never know, maybe someday I'll have this eye. But I'm just grateful for this one. <laughs> All right, well, that's the story. Uh, remember, till next time, life's an adventure. And love is a key, and love is a who, and love loves you, that's what I believe. Love made you, love caused you to exist, and love continues to uphold your existence. And I'm grateful that you exist, I'm grateful that I exist, Agent X out. See you on the next adventure.